Hi everyone, I want to present here some relativity quotes. Hendrik Lorentz. Einstein simply postulates what we have deduced with some difficulty and not altogether satisfactorily from the fundamental equations of the electromagnetic field. I have not availed myself of his substitutions only because the formula are rather complicated and look somewhat artificial. The idea of the transformations used above might therefore have been borrowed from Voigt, and the proof that it does not alter the form of the equations for the free ether is contained in his paper. Hermann Minkowski, I want to add that the transformations which play the main role in the relativity principle were first mathematically discussed by Voigt in the year 1887. George Searle, according to Einstein, Galileo is the author of the principle of relativity. However, scientists such as Searle and his colleagues didn't know anything about the principle of relativity. In this letter from Searle to Einstein, Dear Sir, I am sorry that I have to so long delayed to write to thank you for sending me at the request of Dr. Bushwer a copy of your paper on the principle of relativity. When the paper came to me, I was rather tired with my work. Then came a holiday. But as soon as I returned from the holiday, I fell ill and I have been unwell up to the present time. I am now recovering and hope to be quite well in a few days. I had hoped to make a careful study of the paper before writing to you, but I have not been able to do so. I have not been able to so far to gain any really clear idea as to the principles involved or as to their meaning. And those to whom I have spoken in England about the subject seem to have the same feeling. Joseph Larmor, this relativity business is all right for you, young fellows, but it is not for this old brains. Oliver Ericide, I don't find Einstein's relativity agrees with me. It is the most unnatural and difficult to understand way of representing facts that could be thought of. I really think that Einstein is a practical joker pulling the legs of his enthusiastic followers more Einsteinish than he. Ernst Mach, I gather from the publications which have reached me, and especially from my correspondence, that I am gradually becoming regarded as a foreigner of relativity. I am able even now to picture approximately what new expositions and interpretations many of the ideas expressed in my book on mechanics will receive in the future from this point of view. I must, however, as assuredly disclaim to be a foreigner of the relativists. I reject the present day relativity theory, which I find to be growing more and more dogmatical. Nikola Tesla. Einstein's relativity work is a magnificent mathematical gap which fascinates, dazzles, and makes people blind to the underlying errors. The theory is like a beggar clothed in purple whom ignorant people take for a king. Its exponents are brilliant men but they are metaphysicists rather than scientists. Ernest Rutherford was once asked about Einstein's theory of relativity. Oh, that stuff, he exclaimed. We never bother with that in our work. Louis Essen. A critical examination of Einstein papers reveals that in the course of thought experiments, he makes implicit assumptions that are additional and contrary to his two initial principles. Einstein use of a thought experiment together with his ignorance of experimental techniques, gave a result which fooled himself and a generation of scientists. Relativity, joke or a swindle? The comparison of distant clocks by radio is not precise and well-known technique. This was not the case in 1905 when Einstein published his famous paper on relativity. And there is some excuse for the mistakes he made in the thought experiments he described it in order to determine the relative rates of two identical clocks in uniform relative motion. But there is no excuse for their repetition in current literature. The mistakes have been exposed in published criticism of the theory, but the criticism have been almost completely ignored. And the continued acceptance and teaching of relativity hinders the development of rational extension of electromagnetic theory. The general public is misled into believing that science is a mysterious subject which can be understood 
by only a few exceptionally gifted mathematicians. Students are told that the theory must be accepted, although they cannot expect to understand it. They are encouraged right at the beginning of their careers to forsake science in favor of dogma. Since the time of Einstein and one of his most ardent supporters, Dington, there has been a great increase in anti-rational thought and mysticism. Paul Girac. I believe that the times and the distances that are to be used in Einstein's general relativity are not the same as the times and distances which will be provided by atomic clocks. James Wesley. Boyd assumed that the moving observer should see an electromagnetic wave that is also a solution to Maxwell's equations in his own coordinate system. Boyd thereby obtained the relations that are today inappropriately called the Lorentz transformation. Boyd represented his Doppler effect mathematically in terms of space and time variables, whereas the Doppler effect can involve the propagation constant and frequency only. Boyd's unfortunate mathematical representation of his Doppler effect in terms of space and time apparently led Lorentz and others to naively conclude that space and time themselves might actually change in a moving system. Wolfgang Engelhardt The Lorentz transformation, which is considered as constitutive for the special relativity theory, was invented by Voigt in 1887, adopted by Lorentz in 1904, and baptized by Poincaré in 1906. Einstein probably picked it up from Voigt directly. Although the theory developed so far describes very really well the Doppler effect both for sound and light, Voldemar Voigt published an alternative theory for elastic media in 1887, which he called on Doppler's principle. He insisted that the wave equation should maintain its form upon transformation into a moving system. It is unclear how Voigt arrived at this curious idea. He simply commented with a cryptic remark as it must be. This amounts to requiring that the phase velocity of a wave is independent of the motion of the observer. Voigt did apparently not realize that the independence of the phase velocity from the motion of the observer is in blatant contradiction to the observations in sound for which his theory was supposed to hold as well. Obviously, it is inconceivable that time transforms in compliance with all the different wave velocities occurring in elastic media. Thank you for your attention. Please do not hesitate to leave comments or questions.